Hello there, welcome to session number four, where we'll be looking at addiction. I'll be saying something about what exactly is addiction, the characteristics of someone who is addicted, and also looking at some of the causes of addiction as well. Now at ADFAM we thought this would be a good session to cover because often family members can find a loved one's addiction confusing, frustrating and frightening. Now as, as with the other videos, what I'm going to be offering you is general information so you'll need to decide for yourself how much of what I offer is relevant to the, the situation you find yourself in and then how you may choose to respond to that. Okay, let's make a start and come on to the first slide. Okay, so let's begin by looking at what exactly is addiction. Well, it's a complex phenomenon where someone feels compelled to use substances excessively, despite the negative consequences, to the point where they effectively lose control of their use. Therefore, they persist in a behaviour that's unhealthy to them. Notice how addictive behaviour then takes on a much higher priority for the person than other behaviours that once had a greater value for them than substance use. Perhaps a useful way to think about addiction is that someone's in an altered state where they're no longer able to think straight and to make rational choices about their own well-being. And in this respect, um, addiction's quite like, but is also very different to someone with severe anorexia or depression, where similarly, someone's in a kind of altered state where they're no longer able to think straight and to make rational choices about their own well-being. I'd like to come on next and say some more about the characteristics of addiction. And with that in mind, I'll come on to the second slide. Okay, so what we can see in addiction is that somebody's drug use increases over time. And as it increases, usually because their tolerance has gone up, as we covered in session number two, they become increasingly preoccupied with drug use. They also perceive that they've lost control over their drug use. Now, this is complex, and I need to say a little bit more about it. It's a perception of a loss of control. So their experience of themselves is that they couldn't stop even if they wanted to. However, people can stop. And indeed, only the person who uses is the only one who can make them stop. But if you don't know that and you've not been in treatment, then experiencing yourself as having lost control, that can feel very real. And it can feel like I couldn't stop even if I wanted to. Someone therefore persists and continues using drugs, even as though there are negative consequences. And that includes damage to their physical and psychological health over time, as well as damage to relationships with others, such as yourself, um, family members, friends, colleagues, and so on. Now, one of the things that family, friends, and colleagues can find very difficult is how someone who is addicted can seemingly be unaware or in denial about their own excessive drug use and the consequences of it. And indeed, they may well be so. And this is a characteristic of um, addiction to drugs. Now, as we're going to see in the next session, session number five, how someone changes their substance using behaviour, that in time, someone who's addicted does become aware and they don't deny. But even when they've reached this stage, they can still have real difficulty in controlling their substance use. What I would add in addition to those characteristics is that someone's addiction can happen in two different ways. Their body may become addicted to a substance or dependent as the jargon puts it, true of depressant substances that we were looking at in session number two. And then with all substances, someone can get a psychological addiction. And it's important to know the difference between those two because it would affect the kind of treatment that they have. 
Now, I hope you're beginning to see from these characteristics that your experience of their addiction is very different from their own experience of their substance use. So what may seem really obvious to you may not be at all relevant to them, or they may not even be aware of it. Now, this is confusing and frightening. And I think it's important that we come on and say something about what is it that's happened to someone? What are the causes of addiction that lead to someone being in such an altered state? And with that in mind, I'd like to come on to the third slide. What I have here is the first of two slides that look at current ideas about the causes of addiction. The first bullet point I've got here is this idea that someone has an addictive personality. Whilst this might be a common idea, often spoken about in the media, the research is not actually finding evidence for this. So if it's not just the way someone is, then what does cause it? Well, I've got several ideas to share with you. And perhaps before we go much further, it's important to recognise that no one idea explains someone's addiction. It's usually a combination of a number of these points I'm going to raise. The first one is uh, genetics. This explains some, but not all, of addiction. For example, there are studies of identical twins that show that those who have an addiction to alcohol, something like 50 to 60 percent of their addiction is uh, genetic. And that means that the remaining 40 to 50 percent is to do with other factors, such as the en environment in which they grew up with. The next idea I'd like to offer you is particularly important for the start of addiction. And it concerns the development of two circuits in the brain. One circuit can be termed stop, which is the one that we use to manage our impulses. And the other can be termed go, which seeks rewards. Now, during our teenage years and early 20s, the go circuit comes online and is fully formed. But the stop circuit hasn't fully matured until well into our 20s. What this means is that this period of development is critical for substance use, in that someone's experimentation may become more frequent and also prolonged. It's important to note, therefore, that a vulnerability to beginning addiction can start at this key time. Now, it's important to note at this point that studies say that the environment is more important in influencing someone to start and continue using drugs past the experimentation stage, while genetic factors seem to be more important in someone moving on to addiction. This next point is something I've already touched on. Depressant drugs are physically addictive. That means that the body becomes addicted to having them. So someone needs to use regularly in order to feel normal. And if they don't use, they go into withdrawal, as I covered briefly in session number two. Therefore, they keep using to avoid the unpleasant experience of withdrawal, such as going cold turkey. Now, long-term substance use leads to changes in the brain. And it's important to recognise these because these explain some of those characteristics that I was looking at earlier with you. Long term use can disrupt the circuits that are involved in motivation and attention, in someone's ability to make decisions and inhibiting their impulses and urges. And the result is that these changes in somebody's brain through addictive substance use focus their attention increasingly on drug use, they increase cravings, and they impair someone's appreciation of the consequences of using. So notice those characteristics again. Someone feels compelled to use, they're preoccupied with using, and they can't see what may be really obvious to you about the negative impact that their substance use is having. 
The next bullet point I have here is this idea of self-medication, which I spoke about in session number three. This is where someone has found that using substances is their best or perhaps only way they have to regulate emotions that feel overwhelming, such as shame and trauma. What also affects addiction is the influence from someone's social context in the environment in which they live in. And these influences can be seen as either pushing someone towards substance use or pulling them away from it. This can include things like someone's values and judgments about what's an acceptable or desirable way to behave, which they learned from the environment they grew up in. But also they can face practical challenges and situations that can make change more or less likely, such as being homeless or having access to, to treatment, one of which will push, the other of which will pull. And then of course there's the influence of others, such as family members. One of the ways in which this can happen is if someone grows up as a child and sees their parents or caregivers using substances as a way to cope with difficult and overwhelming emotions. They are then more likely to go on and copy that behaviour and to cope that way themselves. And that leads us back to this idea of self-medication again. Perhaps it's also relevant to note that as a society, we don't seem to be very good at helping young people learn how to cope with difficult emotions or thoughts that they have. And again, maybe that leaves some of them more vulnerable to addiction. And the last point I've got here is this idea of conditioning or reinforcing, which is the creation of a habit, which is where someone develops an association in their mind and lays down a neural pathway in the brain, be it between a trigger, such as shame or feeling the symptoms of trauma, and using substances. Now, as I said at the start, no single idea explains how someone became addicted, nor does it predict the course that their addiction will take either. So becoming addicted to drugs is a complex process that includes elements from many or all of the ideas that I've presented to you. OK, well, I hope you found that useful. There are some concluding comments I would like to make by way of ending this particular session. The first thing I'd like to point out is that I hope by now you can see that addiction isn't a lifestyle choice. It isn't because someone's weak willed. It isn't a kind of character flaw in the person that they are. These ideas are quite common. You often see them referred to in the media. But the reality of addiction is it's a very complex phenomenon and there are many, many causes to it that go far beyond someone just being weak willed or making a lifestyle choice. Now, if you're interested about the causes of addiction and the way it affects processes in the brain, then please see other videos on the AdFam website where we go into this in more detail for you. The next point I'd like to make is that I suggest you consider your own understanding of addiction and what does it mean for you now? And then think through how does that new understanding perhaps affect the way that you see the person in your life who's gone into difficulty with their substance use and in terms of how you relate to them. And an example of this may well be the realisation that, at least for much of the time, they're not going to be open to reasoned argument and persuasion by yourself. What you need is a different approach to coping with their substance use. And we're going to come on and look at that in the subsequent sessions. Now, as ever, I'd like to encourage you to get the help and support that you consider you might need at what may be a very difficult and stressful time in your life. Having the loved one who is um, addicted is a very difficult thing to cope with. I'd really like to encourage you to look on the AdFam website and to find sources of support in your area. OK, that ends session number four. 
I'll come on next and share with you session number five, where we'll be looking at how people can change their addictive substance use. Just because someone's addicted doesn't mean they have to stay that way. And for most people, their addictive substance use does change. And we'll come on and look at that in the next session. Okay, bye now.